Hey folks, how's it going? So, um, I'm going to talk with you today about Shepherd's Purse, but let me do something hilarious first. <laughs> oh, don't you wish you had this awesome hat? <laughs> It's too fucking sunny out here for me to communicate if I don't wear this hat. <laughs> so, Shepherd's Purse, right? She is an amazing plant ally to have in your life if you are somebody who bleeds heavy during your moon time, right? Um, but also for anybody who has just given birth that's worrying about bleeding too much. Or maybe you have ulcerative colitis. Can't believe I said that word right. <laughs> ulcerative. Yeah, it's a little bit of colitis. Maybe you have... Um, some bleeding issues from an ulcer in your gut. She is a fantastic ally for anybody who has a little bit of a bleeding problem going on. Of course, she's not gonna take the place of needing to go to the fucking hospital, right? <laughs> Repeat after me. If I'm hemorrhaging badly, I need to seek medical help, but maybe on the way to the hospital, I could be taking doses of Shepherd's Purse Tincture. Now, she's in the Brassica family, which means, like, think of, um, oh, come on, brain. Think of, like, uh, uh, cauliflower or broccoli or cabbage or collards and things like that um, which means that she has mustard oil content in her and this mustard oil is really fantastic because it's packed full of antioxidants it fights free radicals she's a powerful anti-inflammatory this little curious lady even has camphor in her um, which is usually associated with mint and things but that means that she's really fantastic for attacking viral infections and just like really supporting your immune system um, a lot of people People, when they think about Shepherd's Purse, they just think about bleeding, right? And that is a really, really good thing to know about her. But they overlook her for things like immune support and chronic inflammation and just general exhaustion from like high viral loads. But also she's been recently discovered to really help with um, kidney stones. Like if you've got kidney stone formations, uh, particularly that are mineral based, she can really help just solidify those up. Um, and now she is a common plant. She is an invasive one to the U.S. She's native to Europe and she's been used for thousands of years as a food. She's like a pot herb, right? Like she's completely edible. She's in the cabbage family, right? The brassicas. Um, and now she's pretty easy to identify, right? So the long standing thing that my grandmother always told me is that they call their shepherd's purse because back in the day, the shepherds of various like sheep or goats or whatever you're shepherding, um, well, waste not, want not, right? Use every part, and some parts of the animals have testicles. <laughs> and they would turn um, that purse into their coin purse, right? <laughs> and that was the shape of the shepherd's purse. Now, um, I, that might not be true, I don't know, but I always laughed at it as a kid. But look at her little heart-shaped leaves right here, right? These are actually her little seed pods. And then her bloom is always on the tippy top in white there. And she's pretty easy to identify with just how long she is, right? She's going to show up in fields and unused garden beds, even in used garden beds. She really likes to show up in like agricultural areas. Um, she gets into a lot of like wheat and oat crops. So if you're somebody who's feeding like chickens or horses or cattle, um, she'll show up. And this is um, an old horse paddock. In, on our property and so you can tell that you know they were feeding grain and she just happened to be where they were harvesting and so she ended up here and I'm really glad that she's here she is just a fantastic ally to have on hand um, now I have some personal experience with her beyond slowing down like heavy bleeding during moon time um, in 2020 and to 2020 fashion um, I got pregnant for the first time in 14 years and then I wasn't pregnant and then I was managing the bleeding okay and then I wasn't managing the bleeding okay um, and three things saved my life during that the first one is shepherd's purse she really 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 slowed down that bleeding the second one was because I was eating copious amounts of liver right desperately trying to replace that um, the heme iron the hemoglobin that I was losing which is you know, really high in liver um, and the third one was being really loud at a hospital because nobody would listen to me that I needed medical attention now I'm not sitting there for 8 10 12 hours while I literally bled to death <laughs> um, so those th three things saved me and now remember see 
I used Shepherd's Purse to slow down the bleeding, but I still sought medical attention, right? Um, but she's just a really common thing that midwives will have on hand after giving birth. She is just a really, really fantastic ally to have in your life. And she grows just about everywhere in the U.S. now and pretty much any other country. Um, even in like desert climates, I live in high mountain desert, which isn't quite the same as like, let's say like Arizona or New Mexico, some parts of there that's just like desert, you know, like Vegas. However, she likes to grow in agricultural areas. So you'll really probably find her there too. Again, old like old like fields, horse paddocks where they're keeping cattle, sheep, things like that. Um, and she persists well into spring, even into summer. Um, and now you're going to see this and think that you're waiting for the leaves to fill out or something like that. But this is as full as she gets, so it actually takes quite a bit to make a tincture. Speaking of making a tincture, there is a belief that you have to make a tincture fresh every year if you're going to be using her to control bleeding, right? And, you know, nobody really wants to test that in the way that, like, that's just what people believe. So, like, we don't want to risk it when we're hemorrhaging, right, to try something. But... My brain likes to dig into this stuff. And so she has so many compounds in her, something like 27 different terpenes and all kinds of different oils and stuff. The main ones that I have found that actually act as a styptic, which means to like tighten and tone. And these are the same things that are actually making your uterus tight, tighten up and really like clamping down on that, which actually helps to stop bleeding, is her, I have it written down here because I can never say it correctly. I'm, so you see me looking. It's her Hesperdin and her fumaric acid content. These two little ladies in her are the main thing that are suspected to help with bleeding, right? Um, but the funny thing is, is they're water soluble, meaning that I think what happens, and again, this is just my own theory, and actually, I'll I'll get into it in a second here. Um, what I think happens is that people are typically using high proof alcohol, you know, 190 or higher, um, which gets you at like, you know, it's like 100% alcohol. There's almost no water in there. And then they are able to extract a little bit of those properties because she also has alcohol soluble properties in those particular terpenes and acids. However, I bet, I bet my bottom dollar that what's happening after a year is that those high alcohol levels, especially once they're mixed with water because they're not giving it to you like full water, they're cutting it to make it 100 proof vodka, which is hilarious to me. Um, and I believe that it's probably um, eating away at like, like disintegrating, right? Like it's still liquid in your jar, but what's happening is these properties are being degraded by that high proof alcohol, right? Um, and or there was such a little amount because there was no water present in the tincturing process that it just degrades naturally because I mean eventually over the years tinctures do lose their potency over about five years right but it might happen more rapidly if there's already just a minuscule amount in there right or you're making it with dried plant matter you really need to be making a shepherd's purse tincture with fresh plant matter if you want to be effective also I'd say like probably 90% of the time people who find that shepherd's purse doesn't work for them to help regulate their menstrual cycle or stop this heavy bleeding or are really just like get like their ultra um, their like ulcerative colitis bleeding or things like that under under control is likely because of the um, lack of water soluble properties because they were using um, dried plant matter. Anyhow, <laughs> I am going to show you how to make a tincture in the same video. I know I don't normally do that. I'm going to wait for this train that I hear coming to pass and then I'm going to show you how to make a tincture so I'll be right back. Okay, I found some shade, so let's make this tincture, right? So I, I think it's really important with most tinctures, and you've heard me talk about it in just about every other video, that we use fresh mint, fresh mint. <laughs> oh, I love being human. Fresh plant matter in any tincture that we make whenever possible. And I think that um, with Shepherd's Purse, it's really critical. Because again, I'm guessing what's happening is that those Hesper... Hesperidin and fumaric acid content just isn't very present when you're using dried plant matter or really high proof alcohol. So to make a tincture, it's just a matter of gathering your fresh shepherd's purse and little jar. And now, <clears throat> until we can prove otherwise that it 
doesn't lose its effect after a year, or we figure out the why behind it, you don't need to make a massive batch because remember, you take tinctures in small drops at a time. So like if you make like a quart or a half a gallon or something like that, you would never, I hope you don't need that much to last a year, right? Um, so this is a little pint jar, a little half pint. Um, should do the trick. I probably took too much here, honestly. Um, so I'm just gonna chop my fresh herb up into the jar. You don't need the pulverizer. I see so many people say, you know, really just blend it till you can't recognize it. Don't do that. The alcohol and the plant know what they're doing. And the only reason we're cutting it isn't just to fit it in the jar, but um, to give just a little bit more surface space. But again, pulverizing doesn't really increase it any more than just like giving it a good chop, right? Looks like I might've actually cut just enough. All right, now I didn't show you this in the field, but she does have leaves beyond her seeds and they're, they're pretty small. You know, they're, they're very curled, they've got teeth to them. Um, I hear you, Bumblebee, buzzing around me. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna chop this up and I pulled it off perfectly, just enough. I was worried that I took too much, but it looks like I have just enough. So, I chopped up my shepherd's purse. I make sure to use a jar that you can fill all the way. I don't want you to be like, well, I'm going to take just a little, but um, I'm going to use a quart jar or something like that. No, use a jar that you can fill up all the way with your plant matter because when you pick a jar that's too big and you don't fill it up all the way, what happens is there's air space in there and with air space, you get oxidation and oxidation Hey, it makes your um, a little rougher on like your um, kidneys and stuff, but mainly um, a, a little bit, right? Because it's oxidized. It's like a banana when it goes bad, or an apple when you take a bite of it and you leave it out. Um, it just kind of makes more of those. Like, what are they called? Oxalic acids. Probably said that completely wrong. It makes more acids that aren't super great for your body, but you can prevent that by just making sure that you use a jar that you fill all the way with herbs and then all the way with alcohol. And speaking of alcohol, <laughs> I tried to look so cool there, it didn't work. Um, I use and only use 100 proof vodka. And that is because 100 proof vodka is 50% alcohol, 50% water. That means that you're getting not only the alcohol soluble properties, but the water soluble properties. It also means that there's no math to be done. This tincture, when it's done, it's completely ready. I don't have to water it down. I don't have to do anything to make it safe to consume. And I find, and a lot of people who um, like call these tinctures home for me, find that when you use this this ratio of alcohol make sure there's a water soluble and that there's alcohol soluble and you're using fresh plant matter you get a well-rounded well-balanced tincture and she is just the difference is it's just amazing and when you start getting into the dry plant matter the really high proof stuff you're trying to make a pharmaceutical you're missing a lot of the constitutes and you're very likely to have a reaction most of the time when people have a reaction to a tincture beyond just like allergy reasons it's because that's been made with dry plant matter and high proof alcohol plus 50 uh, 100 proof alcohol 100 proof vodka there we go is pretty cheap it goes a long way and if you can't get 100 proof in your state use 80 proof but let it sit a little while longer so now i'm going to take this tincture and I'm gonna slap a label on it so I don't forget what it is. This is always really important, but especially if you're new to tinctures and you've not been doing this a long time. Um, over the years, you might be able to um, look at this bottle and know what it is. But if you start making a lot and you get really excited, you'll be like, oh my God, what plant is that? You might not be able to remember. So just make a little tincture. On mine, I just put uh, the name of the plant and the date that I gathered it and the date that it'll be done. Now, speaking of being done, this is about six to eight weeks, right? But if you forget about it and it's been a year or two, it's okay. Tinctures don't really go bad, especially when they're in these tight um, little jars like this and you've got the lid on there real tight. No air can get in there. It's not gonna oxidize. It's not gonna evaporate. It's not gonna go rancid. It's not gonna get too strong either. Basically, after the six to eight weeks, you're not gonna really be extracting much more. Um, but one thing that I'm really interested in doing, so this is the second year that I've made Shepherd's Purse Tincture from that particular patch back there. Um, and I send my tinctures in to be lab tested before I can sell them. It's just a part of being, um, you know, FDA compliant. Um, 
and I want to do a test. I want to send in a bottle of what I made last year and a bottle of what I made this year. And I want to see if I can get them to do a terpene profile, you know, in these specific acids that we think might be helping act as a styptic, which means to stop bleeding. And I want to see if the levels are the same. I want to see if they stayed the same. I want to see if there's any real difference in drop. And then I want to make another one next year. And then I want to test them all again. And I want to keep doing it. I want to see when does this actually drop? When can't we use a shepherd's purse for bleeding? Like when does that actually happen? And then maybe I'll get creative and make one with, let's say, um, high grain alcohol just to send that in for a test. And these are just things that make my brain happy. <laughs> Something that you really need to worry about. But how easy was that? You just went out and got some fresh shepherd's purse, Fill the jar up all the way, one that you can fill with the herb, and you dumped 100 proof vodka over it. You're going to sit this in a cool, dark place for six to eight weeks. You're going to strain it out, and there's your shepherd's purse tincture. Now, typically, um, people are using, you know, one to 10 to 20 drops, depending on their body. Tinctures are not pharmaceuticals. Definitely go check out my Let's Talk All About Tinctures um, video where I talk about making them, and I include, like, how to figure out a dosage for your individual body. Um, now, even if it's not good for bleeding after a year, don't dump it out. You still have the capacity to use her for helping with your inflammatory issues and let's say like your immune system stimulation and maybe you want some kidney support. She's a little bit of a mild diuretic in that way too, helps you pee a little bit, not a whole lot. Um, she has a lot of other really amazing attributes beyond her ability to act as a styptic. Um, and I, I do really like her as a styptic. And uh, just to touch on that a little bit more, um, the way she works with that is um, she's actually stopping these blood vessels from releasing more blood. Um, but she also helps our uterus clamp down. And that might seem, I don't know, some people are like, oh, I'm having cramps, so I'm bleeding heavy. But w when your uterus clamps down, it's actually like you're putting a tourniquet on a wound, right? So it slows the bleeding down that way, which means that she's not safe to take during pregnancy. You don't really need her during pregnancy. Um, but that was so easy to do, right? You just watched me. I, I literally just did that. I went out there, talked about a plant, cut some plant, put her in the jar, poured some vodka over top. I'm done. I'm done. If I wasn't jabbering with you guys, I'm done in like, you know, five or six minutes. <laughs> um, but you are absolutely smart enough to do this, okay? You really, really are. You are so smart. You are so capable. You just have to trust your intuition, your curiosity, and be um, willing to walk through that fear, that disbelief that you aren't smart enough because you absolutely are. So if you like my videos, if you like my random impromptu jabbering and my awesome sun hats, <laughs> make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and then share. Sharing helps get the safe, simple information out there and allows other people to realize that they're smart enough to do this too. And you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to learn this stuff, people. You just got to get out there and try. If you're watching me on Instagram, come find me on YouTube. If you're watching me on YouTube, come find me on Instagram. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.